What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Spring is kind of here. We got a little sniff of it, and then it left, then it kind of came back. Now it's back to cold again. I don't know what it's doing. Either way, I figured it would be a good time to talk about my top five favorite spring lures. Now the water's still kind of cold here for me, low to mid 40s, and these lures will kind of change a little bit, and I'll touch on that slightly. As the water gets warmer, as those fish start spawning, some of these I'll kind of switch out, but I'm confident these five lures will do you well all the way through spawn, even into post-spawn. These are going to be good lures for spring fishing. So let's start with lure number one. Red lipless. The lipless does so well early spring because it's a great search lure. Now I usually throw a half ounce lipless in the spring like this. It's a great way to cover water. I will drop down to a smaller quarter ounce like this dude here. If the bait is smaller or if I just think they're kind of being finicky and I want to see if I can get more bites, I'll go down to a smaller lure. But usually I'm throwing a half ounce. During the spring, if you've been out fishing at all or in the past springs, it's windy. It's super windy. So the half ounce lipless, you can chuck that directly into the wind. There's no issues with it. Casting it, using it as search bait, it's awesome. Now most of the lakes and ponds around here aren't gonna have an absurd amount of vegetation yet. In the Midwest, that's all gonna die off when the ice is over. You might have some kind of dead stuff left over, but if you're someone who doesn't like to throw treble hook lures because of all the vegetation and stuff, now is the time to do it. Early spring when all that vegetation hasn't grown up and gone wild, Give some treble hook lures a try. I know a lot of new people just say, if they get snagged on too much in the grass, I don't like them. Now's the time. Now the lipless is a great crankbait to throw early because of the tight wobble. You tie it up here on the top, it kind of comes at an angle, and it does this motion. It's not jumping around all crazy like a square bill banging off stuff. It's a real tight rattle. And bait fish being cold-blooded, they're not going to be darting around all crazy like yet when the water's 43 degrees. They're going to be kind of slow. They're not going to have a lot of action. So that tight wobble on a lipless really mimics that. Now, a couple things to keep in mind about the lipless. You want to try to bounce it off stuff. So if I'm throwing it against a bunch of riprap, I want to try to tip, tick the tocks, tick the tocks? tip the tops of those rocks, you know, that little extra motion, something bouncing off, a lot of times that'll get the bass to react. Same thing if you're around big logs. The lipless actually comes over big logs really well because it's nose down. So when you hit it, it's usually going to come off that way. So don't be afraid of big trees. If you've got a little bit of vegetation growing, you know, somewhere where it's warmer now, don't be afraid to kind of get it stuck in there and pop it out and keep going with it. That kind of different motion instead of just a steady retrieve can often get you more bites. You also want to remember that early spring bass are going to congregate in feeding spots. So if you've got a big lake, you know, they're coming from that deep water to those main points, secondary points, as they're moving the way back, you know, up those creek arms, those little pockets to go spawn. Now you also want to make sure you're really picking that apart so you're not just standing in one spot fishing, move 30 yards down fish, move 30 yards down fish. If you find a spot where there are fish, more than likely there are going to be a lot more there. So don't be afraid to hit that spot from different angles, different ways. Mix it up, try to fan cast around, really pick that spot over because there's a good chance you'll find a pocket open. Okay, when it comes to the different retrieves I use on a lipless, the first one is just a cast and reel, just a steady retrieve. You're gonna wanna mix up how high or low in the water column you're going. Sometimes they want it really slow, just barely bouncing it off the bottom with not a lot of motion. Sometimes they might want it three feet from the, the top and you're going a little bit faster pace. Last, uh, the time we were out, right at the beginning of March, water was just barely 40 degrees. I was actually reeling faster than I thought I should be and I was still catching fish. So that day they were feeding, they were looking for it. So you're going to have to vary it up. Other times I've been up higher in the water column, you can't get anything. You have to be real low. So mix that up. Now the second retrieve I use is the yo-yo retrieve. So after you cast that out, you're going to start reeling it in and then pop it up. You're going to give it slack line, reel up your slack, let that lure fall, pop it up reel up your slack line, pop it up. So you're moving that lipless with the rod and just reeling up your slack line. You can do the same pulling it to the side or pulling it up, whichever you prefer, but it's gonna be that yo-yo. So it comes up and then you let it just kind of flutter down, pull it up, it vibrates, let it go down, the yo-yo retrieve. Now, third, if you're in a boat, you can also fish it almost like a jig, jigging it straight up and down or jigging it off the bottom. From the bank, when you let it sit on the bottom and jig it, oftentimes that's gonna end up in a snag. So I personally don't use that a lot. You can, I still know bank guys that do, but usually I stick to those first two. When it comes to the colors, again, red is killer. I didn't believe in that until the past few years, but it's it's killer. That's a Booyah one knocker. It does great. That red or that Ber Berkeley uh, war pig, the red crawlers do awesome, you know, to mimic that red craw early in the spring. But um, I also like just a white shad color. And that was what I threw for the longest time. That one does really good. That's kind of a sexy shad or a chrome or gold. That's just a regular old cotton Cordell spot. One of the most I'm going to say underrated lipless crankbaits. They're cheap, so I think a lot of people turn away from them, but 
If you're just beating the banks, throwing these, you don't have to worry about losing them. You can get them for like a dollar something, two bucks. They're cheap and they work. The cotton cordell spot in like a silver or a gold. Okay, lure number two. Let's stick with the search baits and talk about swim baits, specifically the paddle tail swim bait. I'm sure all of you have heard of a Kitek. Rage Swimmer looks almost like the same thing. One of my favorites, the Reaction Innovations Little Dipper or Skinny Dipper, just two different sizes. Heck, you could even move up to something like the Miyagi, another one of my favorites. Paddle tail swim baits are versatile. That's why they're one of my favorite spring lures. You know, as a kid, me and Pops used to throw those little two, three inch little swim baits, and man, everything will eat those. White bass, perch, crappie, bluegill, bass. You never know what you're gonna catch on them. So it was something that I threw from a you know a young age and gained confidence with. You've got to remember that in the spring, bass are feeding up, and of course, bait fish or car are gonna be the two main things that they're eating. So something like this to mimic those bait fish does great in the spring. So if you're fishing a lake or a pond that's pretty open, you know, not a lot of wood and stuff to get hung in, you can go with an open hook design like this. This is that six cents divine jig head. Love those, it's got the little screw on there, so you screw the swim bait on, it doesn't pull off very easy. Great for covering open water when you're not afraid of getting snagged. Now the good thing about these is they've got a better hookup ratio than what I'm gonna show you next. And that can come in handy, especially in the spring when those fish are just kind of mouthing at it or grabbing at it. You know, if they're not super aggressive, remember that water's cold, they're cold blooded. So their metabolism isn't up, they're not acting all crazy yet. They're just kind of mouthing at it, that open hook can save you. Now on the flip side of that, let's say you're fishing a place that's got a bunch of rock or wood or grass. You're fishing an open hook like that and you keep getting snagged or you keep getting stuff stuck on it. You can go to a keel or belly weighted swim bait hook like this. You can see the weights here on the bottom and it's weedless. You can just expose this like that and your finger goes right over it. So you don't have to worry about these getting hung up. They're actually pretty hard to get hung up. So that makes them great for beginners. When you're not getting this thing snagged all the time, you're going to put it closer to cover. You're not as afraid to bring it over it. And sometimes that makes all the difference. If you're not close up in that cover, you're not getting bit. Okay, so retrieves on these. I like to go with that open hook design in the beginning of the year um, when there's not a lot of grass and stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of the ponds and smaller lakes I fish around here are kind of a, a silty, kind of sandy, almost gravelly bottom. Um, and you can run these type of swim baits right over the top of that. You know, a real slow reeling it in because when that water's cold, you just want to be slowly going across the bottom. So a slow retrieve for something like this works great when the water's cold. Now, as the water warms up, you can increase that speed as well. You might even go over to something like a, an underspin. This is just a little dude. This is a little 2.8 inch. I know a lot of people like those. Um, when they see the fish are chasing real small bait fish, just over two inches, this is a great option. And that flash can sometimes make the difference between not really getting bit and getting bit, that little extra flash to bring them in. Now, the same as the lipless, you can also yo-yo these. You know, when you've got a keel-weighted, a belly-weighted swim bait hook like this, you're not afraid of it hitting the bottom. So you can literally just kind of bring it up and hop it off the bottom. I know guys that do that too and have a lot of success. So you just kind of have to vary up the speeds, vary up your retrieve and figure out what works for you in your water. Some places I've been slow dragging it, um, you know, the past couple years and it works amazing. Other places I try that and they don't want anything to do with it unless I'm kind of bouncing it. Play around with it, but remember, just like the lipless, bang it into stuff. So if you've got rocks, ticking it over the tops of those rocks, getting it real close to wood, don't be afraid to cover the bass are gonna be there. Now, when it comes to colors on these, I keep it pretty simple. Um, and kind of dirty water, white is a great all round color on the river. I know guys that pretty much throw exclusively white around here, it works well, even that little dude. Places with shad, you can go with a, a shad color like this, kind of a silvery on top. It's got a white on bottom. That's another good one. Or, of course, a bluegill color for you folks that fish a lot of ponds like I do. Um, this is the sungill color. Kitek has a sungill as well, but a green pumpkin, something to mimic bluegill, and that'll tear it up. Okay, moving on to lure number three, the spinner bait. This was truly my first confidence bait. As a young angler, you know, there's so much out there, so many different retrieves, techniques, hook sizes. I mean, it can be overwhelming. So I often found myself just tying on one of these because you can just chuck it and wind it. And in doing so, I ended up putting a ton of time in with the spinner bait, and you start to learn the spots where it works well and the spots where it doesn't work. Anytime you put a lot of time in with one particular bait, you learn it that much quicker. So the thing to remember with a spinner bait is it's mimicking a school of fish. You know, you've got the skirt with an action. You've got blades that are thumping and flashing. You've got a trailer on there. You've got that thumping, moving water, another sort of action. So there's a lot going on with the spinner bait. Now I know that makes some people not really want to throw a spinner bait. It looks gaudy, but it's got a bunch of drawing power, a lot of vibration, a lot of flash, mimicking a small school of fish. So the thing that I learned pretty quick is you've got to have something to mask that. You know, if it's a, a slick, calm day, bright bluebird skies, clear water, nothing's moving. You try throwing a spinnerbait, 
odds are you're probably not going to get a bunch of hits. Now, as you move from that clear water over into stain and dirty water, even if there's not a whole lot going on, oftentimes this will do it. You know, it's bringing those fish in where they can't see as far. Now, another thing is wind. I know, a lot of folks hate fishing in wind. It's a real windy day out. They don't want to go out and mess with it, but wind can be your absolute friend. It can be a slick, calm day, and as soon as that wind picks up, those fish will start feeding. I've seen it happen. You know, especially those days where you see fish, you know, start pushing bait. Spinner bait is an excellent choice, but when you've got that wind and that chop on the water, you got to remember those fish are looking up, feeding on it. I'm only throwing this a few feet below the surface. So with all that ripple and everything on the water, with this going by there, they don't get a good look at it. That's usually when they're going to start moving, start feeding. That's where that spinner bait will come into play. So for the retrieve on this, I'm a shallow water spinner bait guy. I'm not throwing a one ounce one of these, you know, 20 feet down. I'm throwing this up in the shallows, usually only fishing it a few feet under the surface. So I'll start with just a steady retrieve, see what I can get. Uh, if I'm fishing riprap, I'm going to make sure I'm banging it off that riprap again, right? I probably sound like a broken record, but bounce it off stuff. Get those fish to react. Uh, if I'm fishing stand-up timber, stand-up timber is awesome for a spinner bait. Um, you know, you can bring it over those large logs. It's pretty weedless. As long as you keep it moving, keep your rod tip up when you come to those, you're not going to have a lot of problems. But knock it into stuff. Start with that steady retrieve. If you're not getting anything, you can also add some rod pops in there. That'll flare that skirt. It'll make those blades kind of flash, and then it keeps going. So anything to kind of break that cadence. Oftentimes, you get stuck in that zombie mode is what I call it, right? Cast out and just zombie, nothing in there. But bounce it off stuff. Get those fish to react. Give it a little pop. Try playing with your retrieve, and I guarantee you'll get more fish than if you just cast it out and go one single retrieve. Not always. Sometimes that's all they want is a single, you know, steady retrieve a foot underneath the surface. But if you're not getting bites, don't be afraid to mix it up. When it comes to the colors, I'm pretty boring. A white spinner bait like this is one of the best. You can mimic so much with white. That's why it works so well. Or something like this. That's just a regular kind of shad color white with the gray on top. You can see that's been well used. Painted blades, great for that dirty, muddy water. Or like a white and chartreuse, so something like these. These do really well on my local lake. Um, I know there are some places where white and chartreuse just flat out perform. So play around with it. White or white and chartreuse are generally my go-tos. Um, the exception to that is going to be a bluegill color in the spring when those uh, bluegills start spawning. Those bass are just harassing them. A bluegill spinnerbait is awesome then. Lure number four is going to be the suspending jerkbait. Now, I'm no KVD when it comes to jerkbait fishing, but there have been days where I have cleaned house on a little jerkbait like this. A suspending jerkbait like this is great at working those drop-offs. You know, if you're in a boat, you're casting it shallow and working down that drop-off. Same thing if you're fishing from the bank. Work the drop-off the same way. You can cast parallel to it and get in that range. You know, let's say they're four feet off the bank. You can position yourself and work that parallel to it instead of casting clear out in the middle of the pond and coming back to your point cast parallel to it and stay in that strike zone longer, the suspending jerkbait is great at doing that because they're only going to go down so far depending on your line, um, how heavy and how big the bill is on your jerkbait. Let's say this one goes down to five feet. Once they get down to five feet, it's always going to stay in that five foot range. So that makes these a great tool for spring. Now the most important part of the jerkbait is the retrieve. And this was honestly the thing that was hardest for me to master because I'm not very patient and I like to kind of mess around when I'm fishing. Once you get a, a retrieve that works for you, works for the fish that day dialed in, you want to try and mimic that as much as possible with a suspending jerkbait. I just suspended that sentence. So what do I really mean by dialing in that retrieve? So when the water is cold like it is now, low 40s, I'm not going to be real aggressive with it. You know, you'll see those shows where the pros are out there just continuing to go and go and go and go. It looks like they're getting a shake weight workout or something in. That's when those fish are really feeding, that water starts to warm up. When it's still cold, you know, right at 40 degrees, it's going to be kind of gentle twitches and long pauses. So generally, I'll go with a pop, pop, pause, or a pop, 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 pause. Those are going to be, my talking skills are subpar. Those are going to be the retrieves that I'm talking about. I'm moving the jerk bait with my rod, not the reel. So as I pop, 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 and let it pause, in that real cold water, I want to let that pause go longer. I might go maybe 5, 10, 15 seconds before I pause it again. With a suspending jerkbait, as you pop it, it's going to go crazy, so it's going to be like psh, 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 and then it's going to stall there. Suspending means that it doesn't float and it doesn't sink. So as soon as I stop moving it, it's literally going to just stall there, and that's what you want, a jerkbait that just stops dead. So you have to be careful after you you know do your popping motion. You're not going to be wanting to reel it in because you don't want it to go and kind of reel it in. Pop, 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 and let it sit. Take up just a little bit of that slack line. Wait your 5, 10 seconds, whatever. Pop, 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 and get on with it. But 
that's the biggest part of the jerk bait is you can't just you know reel it in you can't just do some crazy stuff with it a lot of times that cadence is the only thing that's going to get you the fish to bite okay so when it comes to colors on the jerk bait now remember the jerk bait is a, a sight feeding lure so the fish need to be able to see it i don't throw a jerk bait in real dirty muddy water to me it's not really worth it so clear to stained water is usually where i'm throwing a jerk bait now if it's a, a lower light day it's kind of cloudy i'm going to go with something that's a solid color something that will make a silhouette when those fish are looking up at it so something like this so a pearl with a purple back or kind of like a i guess that's a kind of a perch pattern but white with like a green a solid color now as it gets sunnier so sun comes out it's bright bluebird day got a little bit of wind on the water Ooh, perfect time to throw a jerk bait I might go to something with some flash on it. So this is like a, a silver black back or a silver chartreuse. This is actually a clown color. Something that's going to give flash. You can also go, not that one, with a more translucent color. So when it's sunny, if they don't really want that flash, you can go with something like this. This is probably my favorite clear water color. This is the Lucky Craft and that Ghost Minnow. Man, that kills. Absolutely kills. And then something like this. This is a Berkeley Cutter. You can see that lip, real small lip. This is for shallow, good for bank fishing in ponds. You know, you can see right through that very translucent color. So more translucent when it's real clear out, maybe something with a flash on the chrome or a solid color when it's kind of low light. Okay, lure number five. Last but not least, it's small but mighty. Yes, you probably know what it is, the Ned Rig. People are probably saying, what, Debo, really, a Ned Rig? Why not a, a jig or something? Well, you can certainly go with the jig or a shaky head or a drop shot, something to fish the bottom. A lot of it's just going to boil down to personal preference. If you're more comfortable with the jig, it's going to fit the same role as something like this. But for me, man, the Ned Rig is just such a fish catcher. I've got a lot of fun. You know, grab a spinning rod, some light line, and these are just a ton of fun. You catch a bunch of fish. I know you're going to catch bigger fish on a jig. I get it. But for me, when I'm fishing, I just want to go out and catch fish. It's tough. I need something to get a bite. It's hard to beat the Ned Rig. Now, the Ned Rig is also fun to me because you've got a lot of options. You know, when I first started throwing it, all the rage was just a regular TRD. One of those guys right there. Z-Man. They came up with the Elastec. And don't get me wrong, these things are killer. Still throw them. Green Pumpkin's awesome. They straight up get bit. But these days, you've got all kinds of different, uh, different styles and things you can throw. You could go with something like this. That's a Reaction Innovation Smalley Beaver. A little three and a half inch beaver bait looks super cool on an EWG net hood like that. You could go with something like one of those little tiny Kytex and put it on one of these little EWG net heads. You could go with the Strike King Ned Rage deal. I forget what the heck it's called, but I mean, they've got all kinds of stuff out now and you've got a bunch of different options. So to me, that makes the Ned Rig fun. Bunch of different plastics on it. Now, what makes it the Ned Rig? Well, it's going to be that head. So that's the Z-Man Shroom's head. You can see it's kind of shaped like a mushroom there. Instead of having it be just, you know, a, a round ball at the front of it where it's not going to stand up as more, that kind of flat nose allows it to come up and stay there. So that's been one of the big things with the Ned Rig is something that floats. Like these Z-Man stuff all float up. I know some people swear that if it's not a Z-Man, if it's not something that floats, you don't want to use it. I've had luck with both. I've had luck with just Senko's cut off, um, just the regular TRD that does float. Try different stuff, see what works for you, but that's the, the deal. That Ned Head with some sort of small, to me, a small finesse plastic on there to try and get those really finicky bass to bite. Now, up until a couple years ago, that was all I used, that Z-Man Shroom Head and open hook design. But if you're a bank angler, you'll soon find that things with an exposed hook often don't play well with the places that you fish. So, a couple years ago, I started using these. There's a bunch of different kinds of these on the market now. An EWG Ned Head. It's got that EWG hook, but it's got that same Ned Head on it, that mushroom type head. And that allows you to do this. Set up your Ned Rig that is 100% weedless. You don't have to worry about doing some crazy combobulation to try to make it weedless. It's just like an EWG hook with a Texas rig, completely weedless. And man, I tell you what, this has saved me a ton of headaches. So check out the Lift to Jig stuff. They've got some good ones. Like I said, there's a bunch of different big bite baits, um, Flatlands Tackle, I use their stuff and liked it. Bunch of different types on the market now, but for a weedless Ned Rig, man, it is deadly. So how am I retrieving the Ned Rig? Well, to me, it's just going to be a pop, pop, moving it with the rod, not the reel, pop, 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 and letting it sit. When the water's real cold like this, I was out a few weeks ago, still had snow on the ground. The only thing I could catch them on was the Ned Rig. Again, it was a pop, pop, let that lure sit, let it soak. I was letting it sit for 5, 10, 15 seconds before I moved it again, then give it a pop, 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 let it sit. You know, I'm not going crazy with it. I have had times where I've cast it and just kind of reeled it in slowly on the bottom, moving it the whole time, and I've had luck that way too. But 
When you're in rocks and stuff, keeping your rod tip up and just pop, pop, pop. Kind of keeping a sim line tight line so it's not falling down in all those big rocks. Trying to keep it on top of that as much as possible. Little light pops the rod, moving it with the rod, and you're just reeling up your slack with the reel. That's all. Colors, if I had to choose only one, it would be just a regular green pumpkin like that, that finesse TRD. Green pumpkin, in my opinion, is the best all-around color with that. I don't know why. I've just I've had the best luck with it. Now, dropping all my stuff here. When you get to really dirty water, muddy water, something like a black or a black and purple, June bug, black with a little bit of flake in it, a real dark color to make a silhouette down there does really well when the water starts to get muddy or something that's bright so you go like a, a green pumpkin with chartreuse on it. Now the last color that I'll touch on is this. This is a Z-Man, it's called The Deal. It was actually some of you subscribed fishing friends out there that told me to pick this one up and I'm glad I did. So on the top it's like a brownish kind of green pumpkinish there. Hopefully that's showing up. And then when you flip it around to the bottom it's got kind of like a blue glitter, light bluish belly to it. This color kills. I've had a lot of luck with it. Now it might not be that way for you in your local spot, but for me around here, it's done really well. So I would uh, I would definitely advise that color. Uh, good and kind of clearish to stained water. I've had a lot of luck with it. That's the deal. And that's in those TRD craws. I like those. All right, fishing friends, those are my top five favorite spring lures. The lipless, the swim bait, the spinner bait, the jerk bait, and the Ned Rig. Comment below and let me know how do my lures stack up to your top five. Do we have a lot the same? Are you completely different with different things? Let me know. I always like hearing from all of you. Now, tonight's subscribe fish and friend shout out goes to Tom Overby. Tom, thank you very much for always watching, supporting, commenting. I appreciate it. And of course, thank you everybody else out there. Without you all, again, my channel would be nothing. So I truly do mean thank you for the support. Everybody stay out there. Stay safe. Hope to have another video coming soon. So thanks for watching and until next time.